We're in a pandemic, but it's time for academics. So let's make sure you all pass this credit. It's a new year to learn about the planet. Like Lincoln Park, we'll be theorising in hybrid. Your temperature matters, so does the temperature of the planet. Some of us are gonna be on campus. We're all gonna try not to spread this virus. Wear a mask when you're in class. We're in a pandemic, but it's time for academics. So let's make sure you all pass this credit. Hey everyone. How's it going? I don't know why I'm asking you questions, you can't respond, this is a pre-recorded video. But anyway, out of politeness, how's it going? Today is day two of EMVS 360, Politics of Climate Change, and today we're going to talk about, can anyone guess? You nailed it! That's right, public opinion. The main goal for today's presentation is to define public opinion. What do we mean when we talk about public opinion, particularly with respect to climate change? The answer I'm going to give in this short video is that really there's no such thing as public opinion. It's not like it actually exists out there in the real world and I can bring it to you on a plate. People don't have a fixed, absolute attitude. There are lots of different pros and cons of any uh, object of political evaluation. That might not make much sense right now, hopefully by the end of this video it will. The reason that there's a picture of a crow is because my favourite joke about public opinion involves crows, and it goes thusly. Did you know that the difference between a crow and a raven is that a raven has uh, in its wing like six, um, six pinion bones, uh, and a crow only has five. So the difference between a crow and a raven is really just a matter of opinion. Please don't leave mean comments on this video. I'm going to begin with a theory called the Receive Accept Sample Theory. And this is from a 1992 book by John Zala called The Nature and Origins of Mass Opinion. It's basically a way of thinking about how public opinion works in politics. All of our measures of public opinion, when we're developing an empirical sense of what public opinion is, we use polls. You go up to someone's door and you ask them what they think about a variety of topics. If you want to define public opinion, that's a good place to start. I don't know if any of you have ever done any phone banking work or volunteering or anything like that, but you ring people up and you ask them what they think about things. Uh, maybe I'll get Ellie and Ollie briefly to reenact uh, the type of survey that you might get. Hello everyone! Today Ollie has prepared a presentation about how it is impossible to separate the way that we measure attitudes from the attitudes themselves. Ollie is going to give me a survey that demonstrates the type of questions you ask affects the attitude you think you're trying to measure. Ollie? Hello everyone! Okay, I'm gonna give Ellie the survey. <clears throat> Ellie, are you ready? Yes. Okay, so, question one. Do you believe it's important for artists to take risks even when it doesn't work out? Oh, uh, yes, I suppose I do. Okay, and do you agree that sometimes it's easier to use animals to tell a story because they're less complicated than people. Oh, um, I suppose I hadn't really thought about that, but yes, you make a good point. Okay, well, then would you agree that the greatest movie ever is Cats? Cats? Yeah, the one that came out in 2019 with Taylor Swift and Idris Elba. Cats is the greatest movie ever? Yes, that's the question! Well, I suppose you're sort of 
making me say that it's good by the way that you ask the question. Exactly! Oh, I see. Okay. Good job, Holly. Bye! Okay, thanks Ellie and Ollie. You crushed it, as always. So if that's the type of survey that we're talking about when we talk about public opinion, if we say that you have a positive or negative opinion, does that mean that there's something in your brain that is positive or negative, and the survey is picking up on that? Zala's argument is no. Zala's argument is that there's no one thing floating around in your brain that is your opinion on climate change. And that's the crucial point. Everybody has a variety of opinions. And so what you do when you answer a survey is you open the filing cabinet in your mind where all of the different considerations, thoughts, attitudes that you have about climate change are located. And you pull out a sample of the ones that are on the top of your head you look at them, and you use them to respond to the question that you've been asked. Zala's argument, Zala's theory about public opinion, is that that happens in three steps. What he calls receive. First, you have to receive messages from the media. His argument is that the media is really central in the development of public opinion. So if you see something on Fox News saying climate change is bad, or if you see something on MSNBC saying immigration is good, you open the filing cabinet in your mind, and in goes a new consideration. MSNBC said immigration is good. That's the receive and accept portion of this. If you are a, you know, um, a devoted Fox News viewer, you might receive a message from MSNBC, but you aren't necessarily going to accept it. So for the mix of considerations in our heads to change, we have to receive new considerations, and we have to accept those new considerations. If we receive and accept enough of them, recently enough, then the next time we get asked a public opinion question, we're going to sample those newer, more salient considerations. So Zala's conclusion here is that it's actually very difficult to shift public opinion. Most people do not receive all that many messages, most people aren't paying much attention to the news, and most people don't accept the considerations that they do receive. Hopefully that receive, accept, sample model makes sense as a way of thinking about what public opinion is. It's not one thing, it's a mix of considerations. It's the whole filing cabinet. And then how do we measure it? How do we change it? Uh, this model also speaks to that. The other interesting thing about this book that I wanted to raise is in the acknowledgements section of this book, there is a pretty remarkable, this is a total tangent by the way, Pretty remarkable uh, little paragraph here. I now turn to the delicate task of thanking wives. The project owes much to Deborah Lavenderzala, to whom I was married when I began it, etc, etc, etc. My debt to my present wife is even more profound. So he's trying to dedicate the book, like, to his old wife and his new wife. I don't know what your thoughts are about this, but whenever I see this, I'm like, what an interesting thing to put in the acknowledgements of your book. So, before we end the video, I want to talk about a few criticisms of this model. Zala really focuses on the role of the mass media, newspapers, television channels. He sees this as the way that most considerations change, because this is where most people get their information. But, uh, in Teiku Lee's 2002 book, he talks about one example of a way that people get their information from their community. He finds that it's not just the mass media that sets up the considerations in our heads, it's also the conversations we have with friends, it's the conversations we have with family members, and in the case of the civil rights movement, which Lee is examining, it's about what our local churches are saying. Although Zala is really focused on the mass media, what about other forms of media that might change the mix of considerations in your head? The Tumblr post that you saw, or the um, Twitter thread that you read. All of those things can matter too. He also doesn't say much in his model about where people get their initial biases from. So why do you become a Fox News viewer in the first place, or an MSNBC viewer in the first place? So that's kind of an unanswered question in his model that could be kind of an important question for thinking about climate change. Uh, I think those are um, some important criticisms of the model. So uh, hopefully now you have a good sense of what the receive accept sample model is. Um, what it means and how it operates. So 
Uh, I'll be interested to talk about the article that you read for today uh, and think more deeply about public opinion on climate change. So, uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, thanks to Ellie and Ollie for their great um, little uh, role play. And uh, yeah, roll credits. Cheerio.